So in the late 70s and early 80s, Sears was marketing the Atari VCS under their own private label. As we know, department stores love having their own private labels because they're exclusive and customers will keep shopping at that particular store. But there was another store that was selling VCS games under their own labels as well. We're going to be talking about the Canadian discount store, Zellers. Their games looked really weird, almost like they're bootlegs. So are these actually official games, or did they just import a bunch of bootleg games? Let's take a look. What's going on guys? It's Poger coming at you with another video. So in my Sears video, I received a very interesting comment. Let's read it. You should consider doing a follow-up video on the other department store that sold their own branded line of Atari 2600 games, the Zeller department store, basically Canada's version of Kmart. They sold an entire line of imported Taiwanese bootlegs of official Atari games with their own in-house titles, labels, and boxes at rock bottom prices. Honestly, I need ideas, so thank you, Jeremy. This sounds pretty intriguing, so let's do it. So if you haven't already, feel free to check out my store. We have hats, water bottles, hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Just go to shop.poger.net. Secondly, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button right there. It only takes a quick second, but it helps our channel grow. Anyway, we're just going to get right into it. Anybody can put on a sale, but when Zellers puts their name on it, you know it's important. Only at your store, Zellers puts the lowest price in the law every day. With Zellers Day's low price. If you're not familiar with Zellers, let me take you back. They were a discount store chain in Canada. At their peak, they were at 350 locations, so they were a pretty big chain. The main drive of Zellers was their great selection at low prices. Their target audience was money-oriented customers. Their commercials would usually depict someone being very surprised at their low prices. They had a bunch of slogans over the years, but my favorite one was Zellers, where the lowest price is the law. Such an effective slogan. It's literally illegal to have high prices. Some of the commercials were humorous, too. One of them starts off in a courtroom with dramatic music playing in the background. I thought this was going to be a commercial for a law firm. Nope, just an announcement about Zealous' low prices. Zellers was founded in the late 20s, but by 1976 they grew to 155 locations. In the 70s and 80s, they were doing really well for themselves. It's important to mention the time frame because 1977 saw the release of the Atari VCS. At the time, Sears made a deal with Atari. They were allowed to distribute the Atari VCS and games under their own private label, but Atari was still allowed to release their games in other retail stores. Zellers had their own private labels too. Stores love having private labels because that means customers will only shop at your store if they like that particular product. If you like a private label from Zellers, the only place you'll be able to get it from is Zellers. Like with Sears, Zellers started offering their own line of Atari VCS games, but what we got was interesting. Zellers would offer 18 Atari VCS games under their own branding. I'm not a fan of the packaging though. The boxes look really bland and boring, and the cartridges look very low quality. The artwork for most of the games look terrible. I mean, would you want to play this? So the front of the box shows the artwork, the name of the game, and the console it's compatible with. The back of the box shows just the artwork again. They couldn't put anything else on there? What about a description of the game? Maybe show some screenshots. Some of the games have really weird titles. Farmer Dan. What kind of name is that? Who's Dan? He's a farmer. And what about Busy Police? You're a cop, and you're busy. The instruction manuals were really lousy. They were usually only one page, and they didn't explain anything. There are 27 different selections. Okay, what are they? This is the entire manual, by the way. This is literally all we get. 
So I've criticized the boxes, cartridges, and manuals, but how are the games? I'm going to start with Busy Police. You're a police officer roaming around a department store and you must apprehend the criminal in order to beat the level. This game should look very familiar to you because it's Keystone Capers by Activision. It's literally the exact same game. So with that in mind, did Zeller strike a deal with Activision to release their games under a private label? Nope. Activision had no idea this was going on. They didn't get permission from Activision. They even edited out the Activision logo at the bottom of the screen. So at this point, you might be able to tell what's going on. Think about it, the cartridges look very low quality, the artwork looks bad, the games are all stolen from elsewhere. These are bootleg games. Every game that Zellers published were actually titles that were developed by Atari, Activision, and Magic, and others. Zellers did not secure the rights to publish any of these. Instead, they paid a company from Taiwan to ship them a bunch of bootleg games. Alright, so now we're gonna try Earth Attack. Let's look at the artwork though. We see a guy wearing a spacesuit with a sword and there's a woman behind him. Not really sure what this game could be. Oh, it's just Defender by Atari. The Atari logo was removed, of course, but everything else is the same. Let's look at the box again. Would you expect this to be Defender? Did they make a mistake? Did the artwork belong to a different game? Alright, let's check out Frontline. I see UFOs on the box and cartridge, so I assume this is some kind of space related game? Maybe Space Invaders? I don't know. Oh, it's Combat by Atari. Look at the box again. How would anyone know this is combat? There are no UFOs anywhere in the game. Compare this to Atari's official version, you see a picture of tanks and planes ready for combat. This artwork makes sense, this doesn't. Now let's talk about Sears for a second because this is very unlike what they did. Sears' games usually recycled the same artwork as their Atari counterparts and in a lot of cases used the same name as well. In the case of Zellers, all of the artwork was redone and most of the titles were drastically changed, so most of the time you had no idea what you were getting. Alright, let's check out Farmer Dan. So you play as, I assume this is Dan, and you're trying to stop a gopher from eating your carrots. The gopher will dig holes and you have to fill them before he reaches the top. If he eats all the carrots, you lose. Not only do you have to worry about the gopher, but you also have to worry about the projectiles from above. So this was ripped off from a more obscure title called Gopher by the company US Games. Very fun title, but I got a comment on the artwork again. Is that a burger? What does that have to do with the game? To be fair, some of the games were accurately named. The game Freeway is actually Freeway by Activision and the artwork is accurate to the game. The title Circus is actually Circus Atari and once again the artwork is correct. The game Pinball is just Video Pinball by Atari and the artwork shows a kid playing on a pinball machine. So we've talked about some of the games, but here's the big question. Why did Zellers do this? Well, from their point of view, this made sense. They're a discount store. Why have customers pay $32.99 for Defender when they could pay only $6.99 for Earth Attack? But this can be bad for a few reasons. For one, some customers may already own a game like Combat only to buy Frontline thinking it's a different game. And remember, the boxes don't give you any gameplay screenshots. Secondly, private labels are supposed to be quality products. These are not quality under any stretch of the imagination. The games are good, but the presentation here is not. The game titles are misleading. The boxes and cartridges look poorly made. The artwork for these games look terrible. And the instruction manuals are a single page long. All of these things could have given Zellers a bad image. Now considering this is a private label, I'm actually surprised that Zellers didn't put their branding anywhere on it. We see their name on the price tag and you see a little blurb on the back of the box towards the bottom, but that's it. You would think their logo would be front and center. It's almost like they weren't proud of what they did. So was Zellers ever held accountable for publishing these games without permission? Well, eventually Atari did take notice that they were stealing their games without permission and they sent a cease and desist to them. So Zellers was forced to remove their games from shelves. 
So is it good or bad that Zellers did this? Obviously from an ethical standpoint this was bad, but what about from the customer's point of view? Well, if you shopped at Zellers, you were getting some decent games for very affordable prices, but because of the poor quality, you had no idea what you were getting. You might have accidentally bought a game you already owned. You also might have gotten stuck in whatever game you purchased because the instruction manuals were poorly written. But I do think because Zellers was targeting money-oriented customers, their line of Atari VCS games were most likely positively received. With the success of Sears' rebranding, Zellers began selling Atari VCS games under their own private label. Private labels give customers a reason to return to your store because they can only get the product there. But rather than striking a deal with Atari, they went behind their back and imported bootleg games from Taiwan. You can just tell by looking at it that these are bootlegs. The artwork was horrible, the games had misleading names, the instruction manuals were poorly written, and the back of the box had no information. But customers were getting an insane discount. Unfortunately for Zellers though, Atari wasn't having it. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.